Yo. Hello, hello. So what happened this game? Why are we looking at it? All right, wait one second. Let me just. Let me. So, uh, just share your screen whenever you're ready. But um, yeah, I felt like I like. I don't know. The game was frustrating for me because I feel as if going into it, like I killed GP like a couple times, but then in the mid game, I didn't really know what to do because I was trying to like split and like apply pressure. But like meanwhile, while everything was going on, like I felt like my vein kept on getting picked because the Blitzcrank just ran like Moby boots and then roamed with the um, Samir a lot. So I just like I don't know. I just need help with like decision making and like things to do because we cracked like three inhibs at one point but then we lost like still lost like objectives and stuff so okay. yeah yeah okay cool yeah let's take a look Welcome do most fior players go ignite right end. now or no i can check i was told there's like a higher uh which you call it um win rate with ignite so you kind of like people are telling me like oh you just kind of go ignite to like be aggressive and win lane. Hmm. So yeah. it looks like, like sometimes though, it looks like most fjords will go ignite versus like I see versus Darius, Riven, Aatrox. Yeah, they'll do it sometimes. Only thing I don't like about ignite on Fiora is like your split push is so godlike. So TP. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it's not like I it's think... gonna be the reason you lost or anything. So. No, I don't think so. All right, let's look at leaning first. So, so like here, I like knew he was gonna do like a barrel cheese, but like I just like didn't realize like how I don't know, I, I I thought it was gonna I knew it was gonna happen, but I just didn't respect it. So I kind of like wait to see, mm -hmm. and then I kind of like run into the barrels, like I think the edge or something right here. I'm like, okay, he's not gonna take these many. Oh, and then I see it, so I'm like, okay. Is but, this even normal? Is this uh, is, is it even normal for? gps to be starting barrel nowadays I've never i, I guess, haven't seen this i guess so i i don't really because usually they start what like q yeah um Normally. so i, I was guess. like surprised yeah that is weird <clears throat> okay it's okay though um okay should be out of barrels now except for the one So I'm assuming you're gonna do what we talked about before here. Like that's your plan now. You're gonna let him. Yeah, yeah. Him. Rather, rather than like, cause like I feel like he's right now. He's like building up a wave, mm -hmm. and I just don't like the vitals aren't even facing me. It's not even worth to like lunge into him. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the. I'm letting him crash essentially. Yep. Perfect. Good. Wait. wait, 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 I swear he just autoed you under tower <laughs> and it didn't. Am I seeing shit? Oh, he hit the minion that was right underneath you. Yeah. Oh, this is free. Yeah. Okay. Only thing I'd say here is, um, like this was, this was good. Like I would say though, just don't, don't tunnel too hard on this vital here though. Because you, yeah. if you think about it, you're just losing out on DPS this whole time yeah. because you're not autoing. That's all, though. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing I'd say is, it's like you knew what the, you ignited him, so you knew at this point you're gonna kill him. So yeah, it's it's important that you're like kiting forward. Mm -hmm. So if he does try to flash or whatever he, if he tries to like, if he takes a few steps this way, and you're still like. If he just gets a little bit away from you and your Q is down and he flashes and you can't reach him with your own flash, then mm -hmm. he can survive. So yeah, you should right. be moving forward. Honestly, if you're kiting forward and he flashes, you can kill him without using your flash as well. But yeah. either way, this was a good kill. I, I, I thought he was going to flash, but I guess he knew who was dead. So mm -hmm. so at this point, I'm. it's like I always get like this is stuck because I'm, yeah. I'm like, okay, like look at my HP. Mm -hmm. But then he like, <laughs> but then he like TP's back. And then so it's like, what do I do? Yeah, so <laughs> this is a tricky scenario because, well, first first thing you need to do is, like, look at how many minions you have compared to them. So here mm -hmm. you have one, two, three, four, five, and he has three, six, 
seven eight. So you could recall here because this will probably run into tower range and it'll kill one of them. Then he'll have like seven. And then his next wave will come. Yeah, you could recall here. I think I honestly believe as Fiora, you even with him TPing back, if you start slow pushing back towards him, I think you'd be fine. I think you'd be able to defend yourself. Um, I want to say that's what I did because I, I saw him back in lane. I'm like, well, if I recall now, I'm kind of screwed. So I like recall here and then I see the wave. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got to stay because he's going to like. Yeah. So you you could have like recalled the moment you killed him just because like. Okay. It, it, now, let's say here. Let me just go back to so you can see it. So let's say you only had like two minions here and he had this big wave. Then that wouldn't work because you would recall this wave would crash. You'd lose it all. But because mm -hmm. you actually have a decent amount of minions here, uh, it's almost even with him. This wave shouldn't crash, so you could just recall here. That that'll probably be that that'll be the safest option. The greedy option, gotcha. which is you know trying to slow push in him and using the minions to defend yourself to crash it. Um, <clears throat> I'd be down for either of them. It, these are tricky spots, and that's another thing about ignite that kind of can be an issue, but. Yeah, Chucky, Chucky e. Cheese death time race. <laughs> yeah, seriously though. <laughs> okay. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. But here, this is this is important though. All right, so you know that you're trying to just get a recall right here. Um, yeah. And I know it seems um, like a good idea to jump in and try to hit him here because he's going to take tower aggro, which I'm assuming is why you jumped in. Um, the thing is, though, like, any damage you take right now is right. not going to help you with your, your number one priority, right, of trying to get a reset. Because if you don't have enough HP, no matter how big the slow push is, it's not going to defend you. So, if your plan is to slow push and try to use it to defend you, then you want to not jump in. Because even if you win the trade, like, you do 30% of his HP and he does only, like, 10% to you. It's still not worth it for you. Um, okay. If you think you can kill him, it's one thing. But right here, I, I don't see a world where you can kill him. I mean, he doesn't have he doesn't have any barrels. But wow, I can't even target you when you're using your W. Okay. Um. Oh, you could have killed him though. Yeah, I didn't realize. I was like, I did not expect the echo. I was like, oh, what is this ability? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> it's the echo. I was like, so I was like, oh shit. And then, yeah. Yeah, because he. Didn't... I think he wanted he wanted to dive me, and then I didn't. Like, he just kind of popped out of nowhere. I was like, oh. Yeah. So it's a little bit of panic. If if you if mm -hmm. you weren't like panicked, which I get it being panicked here. If you flash over and auto that vital, I'm pretty sure he dies. But it's okay. That's just like. Oh shit. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I... Yeah. So this is my this whole entire ever since you killed him. I think the main takeaway here is like you have to be able to try and read the wave to know if you can reset the moment you kill them or not. Um, right. It's a shitty situation regardless. This is like one of the worst things ever. Like it, it, This has been a problem with the game for a while where like you kill someone, you solo kill them, they TP back, and then you... The wave's fucked. So... Right. Um, if I were you, I would... When the wave is like basically even like that, when, after you kill them, I would just reset there and whatever you do lose, you lose. Because it's just better than being stuck in lane like this and having to deal with this scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah in my mind, in my mind as a top laner, I'm always told like wave state is like, like right. essential. Mm -hmm. But like in that case, I kind of have to, I guess, sack a bit of CS to. Yep. Yeah. Just because these scenarios, these are just terrible. <laughs> like we everyone any player especially any high elo player knows your pain here this is just mm -hmm. a terrible scenario um <clears throat> so yeah that's th the main things here are definitely the main thing there is definitely just like being able to you think of it this way the trade-off for bringing ignite and solo killing him is you have to sack a few cs in a bad way to stay and reset like that that's like mm -hmm. the trade-off but lane's fine still. Okay, so let's make sure you slow push properly. Okay, so how come you're autoing these minions right now? Um, 
probably because I'm like bored <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, I know, I know it's going to slow push into him um, with the way, like the wave looks right now. But um, yeah, I'm probably just like bored. And I'm probably honestly just like, <laughs> okay, oh, let's, let's slow push. Let's like fast slow push, you know, make okay, it a little yeah. bit faster. We got to, we got to drop that then. We got to drop the board <laughs> pushing. Um, so if you watch like people that are slow pushing in, in like a hi hyela, you notice they try to auto like almost very last HP. Of right. Them. Because the slower you push, the more waves you can stack. Right. You can uh, like like crash a fat wave kind of thing. And act into them. even more important than that. So let me wait. Do I? I reformatted my PC. I don't know if I have Epic Pen anymore. Epic Pen. This thing is a piece. Okay. All right. Um, right. I'll try to do this without Epic Pen. So another problem with like autoing here is if you auto too much um, and these red minions die just just like two seconds faster, two to three seconds faster than they would otherwise, then so mm -hmm. let's say the blue wave walks up to here and then the red wave comes and it stops here. Think about how much more danger, like think about how uh, much easier it is to gank you when the wave is here compared to if it just, so like I said, two seconds. So if this blue wave doesn't travel for two seconds to here, that means it'll probably be like right here. And then the next red wave comes. So then the wave's here. Think about how like hard it is to gank you with the wave. Right. right. So right. Like, not only do you get more minions on your slow push, but the wave is going to be closer to your tower for longer. So you're really hard mm -hmm. to gank during the slow push. It, it, during the right. beginning stages of the slow push where you're most susceptible to ganks. Once... You're in the later stages of the slow push. Your wave is so big that it's it's hard to gank you. Okay. So this is very important. Make sure I, I get it. Uh, getting bored. I I I can't play certain champs because I get so bored. I'll just start running it. So I get it. But yeah, because look, I, because you're killing this like fast, it, it actually might. Yeah. So look, you see how the wave walked up like that, just a little mm -hmm. bit. So like that doesn't right. happen, and it just stays right there for another wave. Right. That can make that could be a big uh, a big deal. Okay. Um, and it also means I don't think yeah. So you only get two waves here because you're you're killing the minions so fast that you're only gonna get mm -hmm. two waves in your slow push instead of three or four. Yeah. You see now this is gonna crash and this is only two this is only two waves. Remember, the bigger your slow push, the bigger your experience advantage because they haven't killed all of those minions yet. Mm, you have. That's a good point. Like, you can hit level... So, look, you're halfway to six. You're two waves from six. Uh, actually, wait, is this a cannon? You might even hit six on this cannon wave right here. You could hit six and him level four. You could be crashing right. the waves at level six and dive him level six to his level four. Right. Which, then the game's over. Mm -hmm. He, like, you're... If you, if you kill him without TP under tower, that's, like... That is what a high level player will do to players like this. Um... And that's like the most snowball-y thing you can you can do. And then look, now you're resetting here. Let's say you can't dive him level six under tower. Then you're recalling mm -hmm. with more gold because you killed more waves. Right. So as you can see, this little detail of like pushing slower is is so important. It changes so many different things. How much gold you have, your experience advantage, where the wave is, your potential to snowball, like all of that changes just because you're hitting the minions a little too fast. Okay. But we can move past it now. I think I've I think you, you get the point. Yeah. Um where the hell is he? I don't know. I guess he just Pretty Wait. slow. What? Wait. Yeah, I was kinda surprised because I was surprised I was even able to get that crash like What the hell is this? Did he wait for another I have no idea. I feel like if he was waiting for something he'd be over here. At the edge of the... Wait, is he actually just sitting here waiting for Sheen? No way. <laughs> Wait. Oh. No, no, he had Future's Market. He easily could have got it before that. Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so you, you definitely could have hit six. and <laughs> Because of that, you would have ended up... You could have killed him before without not letting, or without him getting back into the lane. Although he does have flash, so it'd have been hard to dive in. All right, 
See, this is the point where I'm like, okay, the wave's like, mm. Mm -hmm. his wave is kind of thickums. So I'm like, I don't know whether <laughs> I like, like. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what were you thinking at all about how close you were to six relative to him? Kinda, yeah. I I did see my bar. I was like, okay, the wave's coming into me, but I did. I noticed it. I wasn't like, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking like, oh, compared to him. I was thinking more so. I'm close to six. Like, I don't. Okay. I don't really know. So. This XP is, is. So you see how, like he, so he got the lane. He was level four when we saw him last. He got the lane and killed one minion. One minion died and he hits uh, level five. So if you look at your experience, you're halfway to six though. So that right there already tells you how much experience he has. And that should have immediately triggered that you are ahead in experience and you can hit six first. So your job when you come back to lane is to thin out the wave, you know, kill as many minions as you can, and then hit six before him. Because even though you're ahead in experience, if you let him just slow push all of this in, he will hit six first because of what we were just talking about. So... You need to be walking up and just killing the minions. That's all. Like, don't, like see that vital? Fuck that vital. Just kill this, kill this, and then uh, get the cannon low if you can. But if you let him kill this wave, you're like this is a very uh, important part of your lane right here. This is where okay. you could punish him. But now he's gonna crash that. So you'll still hit six first, but it's under tower, so like he can walk away. So like that should have turned into, at minimum, his flash, if not a kill. Because yeah, you also got to think of it like this. Like in this elo, he is also not tracking your experience. So he's going to think you're griefing, walking up and fighting him in 30 minions. Mm -hmm. But you're just baiting because you're going to hit six in the middle of that trade. Gotcha. So you would bait him in, you'd hit six. And then you would either kill him or get his flash. And then even if he flashed away and lives, the wave's frozen on your side and he can't walk up. And then the lane's over that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Should have, should have uh, won the lane I right think, there. I think I get like, I think I get like uh, freaked out when I see like a big wave and I'm like, oh, GP like, like could like still like harass me and like poke me down. So mm -hmm. I'm like. Well, that's the. It's GP. Well, that's, that's the key right there, actually. That you so you notice how you just said he can harass me and poke me down like mm -hmm. that that's how this like dynamic works a bit he needs to poke you mm -hmm. his his all in damage like if you guys are both full hp it he doesn't it's hard for him to 100 to zero you right right he needs to poke you so the two like the first piece of this that you needed to understand to make this to like get to this uh play that we're talking about was the experience advantage. Um, and remember, like, yeah, the wave is big, but this is what I mean by, like, if we're going to be playing pig champs, we got to play the pig champs, you know, like, abuse them. That's why they're pig champs. Mm -hmm. So, now, pretty much any champ, it doesn't matter how big the wave is if you hit six first, though. That's why that's the most important part here. The waves are relevant if you're six and they're level five. So, first piece is knowing you're going to hit six before him, Fighting him in the wave, killing the minions, hit six, kill him. Second piece is understanding the dyna the dynamic of this matchup, of where like he wins through poking you, but you win if he lets you get on. Like he pretty much doesn't want to let you get on top of him. Mm -hmm. He wants to like keep his distance, hit you with cues, hit you with barrels, stuff like that. But once you let him crash like this, now the wave's slow pushing back in. He could just chill and wait. Oh, it looks like he's greasy right. though. Hopefully you abuse this immediately. I think I got a splash or something. So he will he will be forced to flash. Okay, that's fine. I wonder if this could have been better. Let me see. Like it. Oh, actually. <laughs> so there's another thing I, I meant to talk to you about. So I notice when you are looking to go in like this, you you kind of get tunneled on the same kind of trading pattern where you are looking to just jump in with Q and then try to like W the barrel. But mm -hmm. it's simpler than that, actually. Like Think about what can he do if you just like walk at him? Like you like don't walk at the barrel, just like literally just walk around like this. So he he has two um, options, right? He can walk this way or this way. Well, he yeah, he's got no barrel to like cuz if I'm walking around the barrel, I won't get hit. So I I don't know where he I don't know where he would go. I guess I would cut off some kind of escape, but 
Well, yeah, he really only has two options, yeah. like this way or this way. Both of those are a win for you. Yeah. So if he tries it, his other option, which is, there's a very high chance he chooses this one, is like stand on his barrel and try to make, like use it to defend himself or something. Like he might mm -hmm. not even know how to react to you doing that. But you mm -hmm. don't have to like go for this. Uh, like this is harder to execute the Q and then W with the barrel than it is to just walk around and make him choose. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because then you, the good thing about that is you don't have to commit anything. Mm -hmm. If he, if he, if you walk around and he messes up and walks like into river or on top of his barrel, then you can use everything, pop your all and kill him. But by doing this, you kind of commit your your big cooldowns like your w and your alt um mm -hmm. and then only get his flash for it uh, i see what you mean yeah that's the issue with this it's a very like linear fight because i'm not cutting him off right it's like <clears throat> yeah exactly so yeah uh and so a lot of time with fiora uh actually it, with a lot of top laners in general um you don't like with darius here let's say i'm playing darius because i've been playing darius top I don't need to walk at him like that's like if I'm just trying to walk and E him like trying to catch him miss spacing and E him but I don't have to do that. I can just mm -hmm. walk at him like I can walk around and wherever he goes there's a chance like if he goes into river he's cut off entirely and then mm -hmm. I'll just start slow pushing. If he uses the barrel I kill him it's like almost the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. um, so in like base, it's basically just like when you're trying to snowball you don't want to commit your really important cooldowns when their flash is still up and then not get anything for it. That kind of sucks. Right. So, like, your other option is you could just Q in there and not ult. Like, yeah. Because what you should be thinking about, this is another really important part of this. Um, the most snowball-y sequence you can create, uh, top lane, mid lane, bot lane, on all three lanes, is starting a slow push, stack up the wave, Look for one nice chunk, uh, like where they misstep and walk forward a bit, and then you dive them with the th the four waves, three three four waves you stack up. Then the game's over. Gotcha. Um, and I actually uh, in my last stream when I was playing uh, on this diamond account, it happened two games in a row. I queued Darius top, and two games in a row I I was telling my stream like this is why you don't trade into a slow push as a top laner. Um, so it even goes against you. It's like if someone's slow pushing, uh, and Wait, you know, are you, you saying, are you saying you don't trade if it's slow pushing, if it's slow pushing into them or you don't trade if it's slow pushing into you, into you. Okay. Because the risk, you have to think of it like this. Let's say you lose 50% of your HP and they lose 50%, but they're slow pushing. So you can't jump in to kill them. They crash the wave and the, an enemy jungler dives you. It's all risk reward. Right. Right. Mm. Um, so yeah, your uh, a sequence you should be going for very, very often is slow push, start your slow push here, and then as you are slow pushing it in, look for one nice trade where they like go up for a CS and you just chunk them like 40% of their HP, just have as much HP as you can get. Because then once you crash the wave, then you would yeah. use your ult and, yeah. and kill them. Yeah, because I feel like snowballing's about like killing them getting mm -hmm. golds or whatever, and then denying them the resources. So you're saying slow push, and then, like, he's already TP'd, so if I crash, a, like, a fat wave, and then, like, he loses on that gold, like, is that kind of how, yeah. like, the point you're actually, getting at? I, I actually have my VOD up from yesterday, so I'll, I'll just show you exactly what I'm talking about, because I, I do this all the time. Um, let me see. So... Was this not yesterday? No, it's not yesterday. It might have been the day before. Let me check. <laughs> Guys, when did I start my Darius games? Is it yesterday? Oh, oh, okay, here it is. Okay, okay. So let me move this screen to you. So like I'll show you how like I made this this Mordecai Kaiser basically rage quit. Oh. Oh. Okay. He basically rage quit because look. So 
you see how so like right there is actually an example like just to show you how deliberate do you did you see that hp right there of that minion that i killed mm -hmm. i hit it like it literally very last possible second mm -hmm. i'm even letting my minions throw the auto that would kill it right so and you'll see <clears throat> so look and now my next wave is going to get here look mm. and see the wave the my my blue wave barely moved mm. so i'm going to keep doing this and i'm going to just be looking for like one chunk on the mordekaiser uh while i'm doing it So now I'm going to be able to make this wave really big. I don't know if this, I think this is the time I end up killing him. So there's a little bit of damage there. Auto W, E. So now I got that big chunk. I don't know if I end up killing him. Hopefully I do. I probably do. Yeah, look, so look. Because of that one trade, that one trade he took that he didn't, that he shouldn't take, now his game's over. Oh my gosh, you live. Yeah. But yeah. So like, that is the, the, that is a perfect example of how to slow push properly, how to look for that one mistake from them when they, they go for a trade that they shouldn't, when it's slow pushing, and then you dive, and that's it. Because after this, like, they're, like, look how much he's going to lose. This is three stacked waves. Here's another wave coming. He lo that's four waves. I'm almost level nine, mm. and he's level seven. So I'm gonna come back to lane, and oh, well, I, I guess uh, something happens. And I, I don't even let him back into lane at this point. Like he just he can't he can't lane anymore. And this is what you could do as well. And as Fiora, the thing you have that Darius doesn't have is so much mobility that even if you try to get, like if someone tries to gank you, you have so many ways to escape because you can jump over the walls. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, queue away, but this is what you need to be doing. You see the difference? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Mine looks really like plain Jane, like kind of like slow push and like kind of like, yeah. <clears throat> um. So yeah, if you do that properly, it, you know, th th that's when you'll be snowballing. Like you, you should be doing that very often, especially if you're winning lane. Um, but okay. So now should I be should I be looking? Let's see. So like. Would GP be looking to like, because let's say like if we look at it from GP's perspective, what would he be trying to do to like mitigate like mitigate whatever is going on here? Like, what do you what I should I try to like push him off the wave? Because sometimes like I feel like certain champions that I play against have like better like wave clear than me, so they literally like like Garen for instance will like come at me and then like try to like clear the wave to like thin it out. Like mm -hmm. what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so basically your job here, now that you don't have all, it does change things a bit where like he doesn't have to be as afraid, but mm -hmm. you you he still can't like fight you or anything. So basically if he walks up for any CS, you poke him down. Um there's not much he can really do to you. Like if Garen would try to walk up in a thin wave here, you would just kick the shit out of him for it. Um mm -hmm. because this wave's way the minions are gonna be too much. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing they like they're when you're slow pushing into somebody like this, their job is to just let the wave slow push in. Don't take any bad trades. So they're, they're not diveable by the jungle or you. Um, and that's really it. The only time that changes though, is like the previous scenario that we saw with you where like you were going to be hit six before him. He had a big wave slow pushing into you, but if he doesn't take into account that you're going to hit six, the wave is like irrelevant at that point and mm -hmm. you can kill him for it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and sorry, one more thing, like mm -hmm. related to like wave management, because you know, like I've seen like uh, top laners where they like so before their the en enemy minion wave like hits the very first time, mm -hmm. they like drag the wave so that it it like slow pushes into them. If that makes sense, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like, what is what is that? And like, should I be looking to do that every game or like so? You no, know? no, you actually don't have to worry about that like at all at the moment because. Stuff like that is more important when the matchups are being played uh, uh, at a much higher level to where you need to cr like have the wave be in a very specific spot. So, like, for example, Darius right now, when I play him, a lot of matchups, I start right here in this brush. 
um, on their side and just walk out from behind it and like all in level one because his level one's really mm -hmm. strong. There's like a lot of cheesy shit like that in top lane. So so to avoid that cheesy shit like that, um, like some some top laners, you know, will pull the wave, try to make it so it pushes them. Uh, just a a anything like that to guarantee the wave pushes to them. But you don't really have to worry about that because even in matchups, you lose level one. Mm -hmm. The enemy top laners in, in this elo all the way up to even masters, uh, they don't they don't play the matchups properly. So matchups where you shouldn't hit level two first, you can hit level two first, and you can punish them for that. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. worry about that for now. Okay, um, especially on Fiora. Uh, and guys in chat, I'll show you what I was showing her with the slow push thing. Uh, after this, just remind me. Um, okay, so here, when he's... Now that you've used your ult, at this point, you should just be thinking, okay, I'm just going to finish slow pushing. Um, and then, like, recall. And, and buy items. Uh, because you don't really have kill pressure anymore. Why, why is your Q down at the moment, though? Yeah, see, so this... That right there, what was that? Uh, which one? Th this one? Y yeah, this Q right here, for no reason. What was this? Like, he's nowhere uh... near you. I guess I just use it to, like, guarantee, like, uh, me finishing off the minion. Okay, yeah, we gotta get rid of that, too. Definitely gotta get rid of okay. that. Uh, because the mana cost... So, not only is the mana cost a big deal, but this, it drops to, what, four four second cooldown, uh, even if it, if, if it hits something. Four seconds is a long time, and I'm gonna show you mm -hmm. why that's a long time. So, right here, you did that, and then, look, he, he hits you with Q right there. That, him hitting you with Q right there... You could kill him for that. Mm -hmm. you, you can literally kill him right here. Because you have a big wave, you're level 6, your ignite is up and his flash is down. And he's just walking in, doing that. But you don't have Q. Right. So, like, everything in this game... So, like, I tell my stream all the time, that, that, like, someone was asking how I remember all of my games. It's like, in my opinion, if you... If everything you're doing is deliberate and there's no such, there's no autopilot, there's no randomness. Like I can tell you every time, like the reason I'm clicking anywhere, any little thing I do, I can tell you why, because there has to be a reason. So like yeah. using a Q for a CS that like, you, you, you know, you're playing an AD champ. You know, you don't, you don't need the crutch of using Q because not only does it lose you kills in trading windows like this, but you know, it's the mana cost as well. And you're already 40% mana. Yeah. So yeah, you could have killed him here. Um, and that's what I meant by if he ever walks up to the wave, you just can, you just go in because he mm -hmm. can't, he can't do that. So he poked you down there and every little bit of HP you lose for free like that makes it so like, if you make a few mistakes while slow pushing in here, you could be get put in a bad spot where the wave gets frozen or you get ganked, yeah. you know? Um, so every little, every little thing counts here. So like, see this right here, this is not, um, so let's say you would win the trade here. So, so let's say you W'd in time. Wait, I think you did W in time. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, did you W in time? How come you were still slow? Oh no, you didn't W in time. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's say you did though. What do you think happens there? If, if you, I don't... If you W in time and block the barrel. If I block the barrel, then um, I just don't take the damage from it. But then I lose... I lose, like, a big cooldown. Because that's, like, 24 seconds. Do you kill him? Um, If it hits him, then maybe. But um, I don't think I hit him in this instance. Okay, so yeah, you, you definitely don't kill him if it lands. Um, hmm. And... So even if it lands, so this is, again, just goes back to risk reward. The risk here is you taking damage, losing a big cooldown, and now being gankable or even solo killable or like bad wave state and having to recall. And the reward is not even a kill. Mm -hmm. So like this is a spot where you need to like stick to like know your priority. Your priority here is to just get this wave shoved in and slow push. Uh not go for anything like that 
that doesn't even have much reward behind it. Yeah, so now he's six, and you lost so much HP here in these last 30 seconds. Now the scenario is really tough. Yeah. <clears throat> so you do hit level seven, though. Mm. Oh, he's going to thin out the entire wave, though. Yeah, you waste a lot of mana on Q. Okay, that's going to help a bit, though. All right, Chuck E. Cheese Fruit. That'll help. Okay, so yeah, this turned into a situation where you should be, you know, where you could have killed him, snowballed the game out of control here to, like, he's dictating the lane. Now, once you got the fruit, you should have been more confident to walk up at this point. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm like, my, my, my mentality is like, um, I don't have ult, but he does now, so, and we both don't have flash, so... I just, I don't know if I wanted or not TBH. I like kind of just wasn't thinking about it. Okay. So there's multiple reasons why you, you need to be on the other side of the spectrum here where like you should be like, oh, I can kill him. I can't let him crash this wave. First mm -hmm. level difference. Levels are a really, really big deal. A lot of the time you can tell who will win a 1v1 just off level alone. Um, there's, you know, certain exceptions, uh, but yeah, uh, level is a big deal here. And then you have Ignite. He does not. Um, and like GP all, you know, it's a decent all, but it's not like incredibly strong early on. It's not like, you know, a big... It doesn't really turn... Uh, it's not enough to make up for a level lead and a summoner spell advantage. And you're Fiora. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have a big wave or anything. He's been using barrels nonstop. A big part about play against playing GP uh, is tracking his barrels a bit. Like, you don't have to track them, like, down to the number. But when he does stuff like this, so he used one barrel, he just hit you with it, and then you put another barrel down, uses it, and then he puts another barrel down. So, like, look at his barrels now. So, he has no barrels left. Right. So, like, that is something that you need to be taking note of. Because then that lets you know if you jump in here, all he has is alt, one barrel, which, you know, you do have W to block. Your W, all it has to do is block, like, a Q, a barrel. Like, you can... Oh, it does show you how many barrels. Wait, you don't even have to... You don't even have to track it anymore. I forgot. So, if he's, if he's low on barrels, is that, like, a good sign, then? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, like, most of his damage. That and his passive auto. Right. And his passive auto does, like, reset when he kills a barrel. But, like, when mm. he, he's going to hit a minion, like, when he hits a minion with it, that, that eats his passive auto. So if you, if you jump in here, all he has is one barrel's worth of damage. So, like, he's pretty useless. You okay. kill, you kill him here every time. So he's just kind of getting away with murder, basically. This is, like, the, the typical... This is, like, pretty much any VOD review I do in the no Revo, this is what happens nonstop. Um, and this is this is your main goal. Uh, this should be your number one priority when it comes to like improving and learn and, and like progressing. It needs to be progressing in lane, not letting these top laners get away with murder. Especially mm -hmm. as Fiora. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, that's his... Oh, you gotta hit those barrels. Yeah. Especially when, like, you hit him with W there, that, that Chuck E. Cheese attack speed slow, that mm -hmm. I asked Riot, and they said she doesn't need it, but that's a talk for another time. Um, when you slow his attack speed like that, it's really, he can't hit it before you. So then you hit it, and then you just run him down. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, you would have killed him here too. Yeah, you would have killed him. I think you might still be able to kill him, let's see. A little bit of a misplay, right? A uh, little bit of a misplay. Her W reduces attack speed. Crazy, right? Um. So yeah, if you hit that, and then, so like right here, you did auto, and then you did uh, Q right on top of him. Think you want to try to uh, Q as far as you can past him. But the other problem was, look, you see your your. I know you're trying to go for the vitals, but you have to, if you're going to be going for this vital you need to try and stay as close to him as possible because you're kind of mm -hmm. letting him 
You see, like, you're letting him get away. Oh, and it doesn't look like you're orb-walking, actually. Are you not orb-walking? When you're, when you're fighting him here, are you r just, like, right-clicking him and then moving forward? Or are you, like, canceling your, the recovery of your auto with a movement command? Do you know what orb-walking mm -hmm. is? Um, I know it on Twitch, or, like, I know, like, on, like, ADCs. Like, I know that's, like, what you would call it, like, I'm not sure if it's the same meaning, though. Like, orb yeah. walking on ADCs. Yeah, it's the same. Or, like, gliding or whatever. It's, it's, it's literally just, can it's just canceling the recovery animation, the recovery frames of your auto attack mm -hmm. with a movement command. So the auto goes through, but then the recovery part of the auto, you... you I should be cutting up. Yes. Like, okay. So you kind of did it there, uh, maybe unintentional, but like every time you auto like that and then don't move, look, so we'll slow it down. Look, see how long you're stuck here like this? Mm, I see. I see. If you're orb walking properly, you will auto him like that and still be right on top of him. Yeah. Um, and then. It's so intricate. <laughs> what'd you say? It, 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 it like, it feels so intricate, I guess. Like, Cause like, I don't like do it. So mm -hmm. I like keeping in this in mind, like for my future games i'm like oh wow that's like a lot to like take into consideration and stuff yeah it'll become second nature really fast though mm -hmm. you won't even have to think about it um because like as you can see it's so important that if you do it here he dies because mm -hmm. you proc the vital ignite maybe one last q and that's it um but again just like more things that are let okay this this is what he gets for egoing like that okay good Luckily, we didn't let him get away with murder there. Um, problem is, he does have TP. I knew he was going to TP back, so I was like, oh, fuck it. Honestly? Okay, so... This... This is... With this amount of HP... So actually, let, let's let you hit level 8. So, with this amount of HP, he actually can't kill you if your ult is up. Problem is, you waste so much mana... That you don't mm -hmm. have enough mana to alt and use the rest of your abilities. Right. So this just goes back to all of these cues that we've been using, you know, on the ward here, on CS that I don't need to use it on. Uh if you have the mana, that this is another point where like in lower elos, I kill the enemy top laner because if you know your limits better than them, which you should, uh you can make it seem like they can kill you, but you turn it and like Honestly, I don't even know if this elo is low enough to where they actually... There's no way he actually thinks he could kill you. Well, actually, let me ask you. If you had more mana here, enough for your entire kit, did you know there's no chance ever he can kill you here? Um, probably not, because, like, uh, like looking back on it, like, uh, I don't think he can kill me, but just looking at my HP and, like, my mana alone, I was like, okay, well, he's probably going to TP back and then... I didn't. I didn't consider like my because like, I didn't. I didn't realize my alt was coming back up. Mm. So I was like, yeah, like that didn't go through my brain. Okay. I just thought to myself, okay, well, I'm like really low. I'm not sure if I can kill him. It's a cannon wave, so maybe I just recall and like walk back and pray that he pushes it into me, kind of thing. So. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's actually expand off that comment right there. You said I wasn't sure if I could kill him. There's a big mm. difference between not knowing if you can kill and knowing for sure you can't. Um, so let's say you had more mana here. So like in your future games, I know you're not even want to hear this. And like, it, this is a hard mental, uh, hurdle to get over, but it's very important that like in a future game, you have enough mana, you know, he's TPing in, you have this much HP, you have alt, he doesn't, he doesn't have ignite to like stop your healing or anything like that. It's important for you to be like, Hmm, I don't know if I can, if, if I can defend myself here but you need to try because you mm -hmm. will be very surprised what your champion's capable of. The mm -hmm. amount of times I've tried to kill Fiora when she's no HP, hasn't recalled yet, and her Chuck E. Cheese alt and healing makes it impossible to kill her. You know, it's... Right. So, because I... See, I, I don't play Fiora, but I can tell you here, uh, just from, you know, 10 years of playing, that, like, there's no chance he could ever kill you here. So, do you think, like, from your experience, do you think I can kill him? Or do you think it's, like, a more so, like, I chunk him enough to where I heal off of my ult and it looks more favorable for me? Like, so, like, without, without 
uh, the mana, you can't kill him because your alt's going to be 100. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you have what? Yeah, a Q. Like, you need your entire rotation. Uh, but mm-hmm. if you have enough mana for your entire rotation, you 110% can kill him because... But you only kill him if, you know, you bait him into trying to kill you. Right. Because, like, cause if, if, I, if I just, like, go at him right now... Oh, like, yeah. let's say he TPs back and, like, he's... He like he's like where the cannon is, right? Like I I know for sure I don't have enough space, so yeah. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I don't kill him because he's not gonna like, you know what I mean? Right, right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, remember, well, remember your priority here is to just get the wave crash. That's the only reason mm-hmm. we're even thinking about like killing him. The whole point is gotcha. we're here to crash the wave, and if you know that you can kill him if he tries to you know fight you, then you can do that. Um, and if he doesn't fight you, you get the wave crash. It's a win win. Mm-hmm. And you don't recall in this bad wave state. This is how mm-hmm. like your snowball will stop if you if you keep recalling on bad wave states. So we got to make sure we're fixing this part. Um, and so you've killed him twice, both with ignite, and both times on a bad wave state. Mm-hmm. Which, to be honest with you, like it almost cancels each other out. Because look, now you have you have two kills. You have 3,000 gold. He is 2,937. He still has all this to collect, and you're not going to get any of it. He's going to be ahead of you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this, it's a very... If you can't, you know, bring Ignite and, you know, be able to manage the wave states, it's not worth it, and it's better to bring TP. Um, but, you know, you can also... It is fixable. This is all fixable stuff. Yeah, because people tell me, like, oh, like... Um, don't go TP in low elo because you you don't use it right or like, not not like like me in particular. I don't use it right. Just in general, people are telling me like, oh, like low elo like top laners don't know how to use like TP correctly or like the the fact that because in because what you mentioned where like like with the TP thing, it's like I can use it to like TP back or whatever if like if there's like a bad wave state or something to like get healthy again. Like people are telling me also like it is my fault if I get myself in that situation. In mm-hmm. the first place, that like that's why TP isn't good. So I All don't right. know what to make whoever, of it. Whoever told you TP isn't good in low elo? Yeah. See, talk about this all the time, but the amount of like bad advice that gets thrown around uh, in the league community or the league scene or whatever is pretty crazy. The amount, the things that I hear. Um. Not only is that line of thinking. Like saying TP's not good in this elo, not only is that just wrong, but it's just not the way to learn. Like it's more teaching how to use the TP at that point. That uh they, like TP and Ignite both have their you know pros and cons, uh, and you have to play around them accordingly. Um, but there's no world ever where you shouldn't bring TP because of the elo. Mm-hmm. Because they both just give different things, just straight up. Um, mm-hmm. honestly, like, TP is more consistent. Ignite, you know, gives you that, that kill pressure, especially in like matchups where it could be hard to kill them or something. They have a lot of healing, Aatrox, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the advice like that is really just crazy to hear. Um, but what I did want to talk about here. So why did you rush armor shoes? Um, my thinking is like, what goes on in my mind is that like, currently, like, I know the, I look at the wave state and I know it's bad. Cause I thought, I thought I'd be able to like, mm. I didn't, I didn't know it would like freeze for him. Cause yeah. Cause right now I like know my cannon's about to be dead. So my thinking is like, I need to get back to like, um, like lane as fast as possible. So I rush the armor boots so that I can like get that extra, like what, like 15, 20 move speed from the upgrade. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and yeah. That's a that's a good I that's a, actually a really good way uh or like good reason. Um it doesn't apply here, which I'll explain why in a sec. Um but like in other lanes or like let let's say, you know, it was like earlier in the game that would be a little bit more important. Um the reason why it doesn't apply here is because first you're getting to the point now where missing a you know s- some minions experience wise isn't as big of a deal because you need more experience to hit the next level than 
early levels. Um, so, but the the th like the opportunity cost here, like what you're giving up to rush armor shoes, is you know like a T be a blast. Hat or you know something that's gonna give you more damage, which is gonna let you snowball harder. Mm -hmm. This is so like let's say the enemy jungler was an AD champ, then this this would have a lot of value. But right. it's Echo, so this is only valuable versus GP, who you should be stomping already anyway. You're ahead of him now in terms of levels, at least. Uh, so what you're gaining by getting these isn't worth what, like, isn't, um, you're losing more by going these than, than what you gain, because now it's harder to kill him. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? That makes sense. But it's a good, it's a good way of thinking. Like, if it was earlier in the game... To where, like, you, you know, you're level five or something, so experience is a way bigger deal. Getting back to lane faster, that's great. Like, basically, in top lane, it's rare that you rush level two shoes to fix a situation like this compared to mid lane. In mid lane, that's actually a very uh, common thing. Like, I, I do that a lot. But mm -hmm. top lane is not as common. Um, I think, like, some of my friends, or I shouldn't say who says this, but, like, I've been told that, like, um, <laughs> Like Tiamat is like a great like I I always like Tiamat and Fiora because like she has really crappy wave clear and it's nice mm -hmm. to have that an active now as well so it's great um, that like if I ever get in a situation where it's like nice to like freeze and deny them that uh, like Tiamat's just gonna ruin it and they're like yeah uh, pain okay so <laughs> I'm sorry I gotta tell you <laughs> yeah no it's good yeah t it's good to tell me anything that you've heard because I can correct it so <clears throat> um. Freezing is a thing that you do. It's a it's a it's way more rare than most people think it is. Like it, it's what you do when you know, like what he just did to you. He froze here because you had to take a bad recall. That's a good time to freeze. Mm -hmm. Um. Now let's say let's say I don't have alt. I, I'm playing Darius or Fiora, and I don't have alt, so, so I don't want to start my slow push to dive him. And the waves, you know, froze on my side. That's that's a, a all right time to freeze too because I can't one v two without my alt. I can't really dive in without my alt yet. But ninety percent, like if the game's going perfect, you're going to be pushing all the time, nonstop. Push, push, push. Mm -hmm. Pushing is the best thing you can do in any lane. Mm -hmm. Uh, so and and the thing about Tiamat is what's so amazing about it is you know it takes a champ like Fiora, so. There's so many benefits to having more wave clear, right? Like it makes it so you can fix wave states that you wouldn't normally be able to fix. It makes it so you can that like you can start vacuuming up resources. You can push mm -hmm. this, go to their Krugs, take that, proxy the next wave and kill it way, way faster using way less mana than normal, right? And, which gives you a big tempo advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there's there's a lot of benefits to the Tiamat. Yes, it makes it a little bit harder to break a freeze, but to be honest with you. Or it makes it harder to keep a freeze, but it doesn't prevent it entirely. Because mm -hmm. even though your autos are doing AoE damage, it doesn't. It's if you are keeping enough minions on their side, it's not going to break the freeze. Mm -hmm. um, so not only should you not be freezing very often, but the, again, the pros of the Tiamat are going to outweigh the the little con that it might end up breaking a freeze because you really shouldn't be freezing often anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Tiamat way, way, way better here. Way, way better. Um, I needed to hear that. I think that's been like so, because like you saw the whole like rush the armor boots, and then I now I have like because my my thinking is that I have I have like uh, vamps up, and like I have I can like heal, mm -hmm. so like that will give me sustain. I just get to lane faster. But the whole like thing about like the Tiamat, I needed to hear because I've been doing the whole like rush boots, skip the Tiamat vibe. Which oh. probably like denies me a lot. Yeah, that's gonna make it much harder to kill them. Like it lets you survive, but you don't need to survive. This is free, mm -hmm. right? Like you, this is this matchup hasn't even been hard so far. You're just kind of running no. him over unless you like you know misplay yourself. But it's, he can't do anything to you really. So, um, and and like again, that play I showed you that I made, like I can't make a giga snowbally four wave crash into dive play if I'm freezing. Right. Um, so, and like, I actually, I really only scratched the surface on why freezing, like why pushing so good compared to freezing. Um, but mm -hmm. for right now, like, yeah, pushing is the, puts the most pressure in the lane. 
it makes it so the enemy top laner like can't move they can't roam they can't do anything they can't move it's going to pull jungle pressure which is what you want it gives you tempo advantages which leads which leads to be like especially this season where like fights over these chuck e cheese objectives this this the grubs happen non-stop junglers just force it non-stop if you're pushing yeah. the enemy top laner can never help mm -hmm. you're you can help they can't or else they lose too much or you'll just kill them on the way so, the moment where you uh did the like the darius mordekaiser dive like i oh wait you lived so even if you would have died, would you say that's still worth it because oh, yeah. you denied that much DS? Oh yeah, giga worth. You could easily okay. die for that and it'd be worth every time. All right. <clears throat> and the best part is, by the way, about the, like the cherry on top about a play like that, that op that like really strong sequence I showed you, is because you step like crash such a big wave and killed them, it starts slow pushing back to you. So then you come mm -hmm. back to lane. That's why. I the next part in that VOD where I skipped ahead a little and I come back to lane, the wave's right here. So I'm mm -hmm. two levels up. I just bought so, like, I just used a ton of gold and the wave's right in front so he can't even walk up yet. Right, like rinse and repeat. Yep, it's exactly. Like... That's what happens. You just rinse and repeat the same exact thing. And then you just, they can't play. Alright. So, now he's slow pushing into you. Wait, so how did you lose so much HP so far? I was trying to crash this damn wave or something, but then like, you yeah, you you kind of tunnel on the same thing like we were talking about earlier. Like you keep trying to Q into W on him, but you don't have to mm -hmm. do that. You can just walk right up here. Yeah, yeah. And then you you know you can crash the wave if he puts the barrel on top of you. That's that's not hard to react to, if. Mm -hmm. You're just hitting the minions, then he puts a barrel here and a barrel here. You could W that. That's fine if you want it. But yeah. every time you do this, like, he, what did he lose there? Two barrels, mm. which cost him what? No mana. You lose a big cooldown. Uh, and now he's poking you. Like, right there. You actually don't even have to walk away from him in a situation. Do, like I, do, I, do I auto that barrel and then Q upwards to hit the vital? Yeah, well, just in general, you definitely need to be hitting GP barrels way more. Um, yeah. So For me, I, like, as a melee champion, I like I do it if I'm, like, ranged. But if I'm, like, melee, I get, like, I, like, get, not, I get scared. And I'm like, That's... oh, shit, is it going to hit me? And I'm like, oh, shit, it's going to, like, I'm coin flipping this. So I'm like, I don't know. That's funny because it should be the opposite. So range oh, is okay. much harder because like your auto has to travel. So you have to time it so well that it tra you have to take in the travel time of the auto. And mm -hmm. he's right next to it. So like mm -hmm. it's very hard to beat him on the barrels with the ranged compared to melee when he's right next to it. So he just hits it instantly. As a melee though, you know, you're also right next to it. So he, he GP will do, he'll put a barrel down and then he will auto it once normally to bring it to two, and then it'll tick a third time, and then you'll go from there. But if he just puts it down like this, he can't... If he walks up and autos it here, you he doesn't have his auto attack up to hit it again. So, yeah, you definitely need to contest the barrels more, especially as Fiora. Like, honestly, your attack speed should be way higher than his. Yeah, like, and your attack speed's higher, so you hit even faster. And you have an auto reset. So, like, yeah. you can hit it at... You could jump in... You could uh, auto E and hit it from two bars. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you definitely yeah. need to contest the barrels more because he kind of just puts them down and doesn't give a shit. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So at this point, so at this point, you could like poke him, let it push in, and then let it uh, then start a slow push and go back. Um, or you can, you know, try to force things here and outplay him that way because you are strong enough to do that. Um, it really depends on basically if you can't get him to make a mistake, what would end up happening is the wave slow pushes into you. You thin it out, you make the wave even that'll cause it to slow push back to him. Uh, but at this elo, they're always going to be making mistakes. So you should queue in right here and proc the vital because he's walking at you. You did not. I think you are afraid of him putting another barrel down or something. Yeah, I am. Like, am I like the barrel staring at me? I don't know. You gotta I'm like. You, you gotta remember how fast this happens. How fast your Q happens here. So if you Q him right there, 
and he tries to put a barrel here, like you have options. You can you can move to here. You can move to here. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not just free for him. Okay. So when he's just giving you a vital like this, there's no reason to not not take it unless you're so low that a barrel could get you killed. Like the risk here is okay, he might hit you with a barrel, but whatever. You you might trade evenly. But when he's back here and you like try that could be a little bit risky overextending for a vital. But mm-hmm. not when he's like way up there giving it to you. Okay. That that was fine. Um you do take a sheen auto for it though. Like see like right there, I would I would never queue forward for that. You don't have to queue forward for it. You can just th- you gotta think of it like this. You want to be playing like the footsies game. Like you, you want to w- walk like you're gonna go hit it, and then you just click backwards last second. He will waste his Q shooting this. So mm. you eat the barrel, you dodge the barrel, and he wastes his Q. Okay. So like you don't have to Q forward for this. You want to play that mind game, make him like just bait him into. Because you, mm. you're wasting. So you're saying? Are you saying I walk up and I make the barrel look like oh I'm gonna get hit, and then I like. Hit it myself, cancel, and then queue forward. No, no, no. Avoid. No, I'm saying you act like you're going to go hit the barrel. I see. And then he's good because he has to think about it. He needs to take into account his queue traveling as well. Mm-hmm. So you walk at it like right on the edge of it. He's going to walk mm-hmm. forward thinking you're going to kill it. He's going to queue it, and you're just you're already preemptively walking out. Mm, I see. I see. Can can you like can you like circle your cursor on like the barrel to show me like like what's the range again? Like oh 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 yeah yeah. So the yeah. barrel's like this big. Mm, okay okay. It's it's not huge. Like yeah. This big. So you would walk to like right here. So I'll show you. You would walk to right where my mouse is right here. You you can see it like you know it has a circle around it so like yeah you walk right to the edge yeah, of the circle. It's not showing here for some reason, but right. Yeah. And like even if he doesn't bite right away, like you're you you're just gonna be doing this like right like you'd be right clicking just like this, like moving mm-hmm. in and out of the barrel because if you're preemptively moving out, he can't. It's not possible for him to hit you. You're just baiting him, right? Because he's not close enough to hit you. He's not close enough to hit you with another barrel from all the way back here. He has to basically mm-hmm. shoot this one if you if you get close. Um, and if he tries to put another barrel down, you're already breaking this first one, so he can't hit you with the chain. Okay. So what he because he's kind of out of position, he should be standing basically right on top of the barrel. Mm-hmm. So if you jump in to cue him or something, he just autos it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. But if you waste your cue just to delete his barrel that like regen like this, then you're cut and then yeah. take free poke. I have this thought process in my mind that if I queue onto the barrel, it's gonna like auto it, but like I don't think that's how it works. I no. want to say, nah. uh, and then the other thing is, every time you waste Q like this, you can't trade. So, look, that's a good point. Yeah, you like he had okay. Well, he has a barrel up now. Look, so what you should be doing is walking up, walking up for the CS to auto it, and then if he puts another barrel down on top of you, you see it, you can queue out. That's fine. He wasted both barrels, yeah. and then you avoid it, and you only use one Q to do so. But you're using Q and not avoiding anything. So you're just constantly making it so you can't trade, and he's just poking you every time. Like, he doesn't even have to use the barrels because you're, you're, you're losing to yourself, basically, at the end of the day. Right. Um, so you need – if you're going to be using Q, you want to be using it either to avoid – his barrel combo as you walk over the CS, or if he's not using a barrel, you walk over the CS, he walks up to Q you, and you Q him. Right. So then you're trading and not just taking free poke. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal in, to- in top lane. So, like, for example, let's say you're playing a ranged matchup. Like, they're a ranged champ, Kennen, whoever it is. The wave state's, like, even in the middle. You're walking up for a CS. You don't want to just Q every CS. You want to be like autoing the CS and if they walk far up to auto you, you queue them. So now you're trading damage. See? Mm-hmm. Um, because as you can see here, you're just gonna slowly lose if, if you're playing like this. Um, so that was a so this was a little bit better. It's just you you did jump into a big wave for this. Um, to where like you should take a lot of damage here just from the minions. Yeah. 
it's like would you look to would you look to get rid of the because because iq on him here right uh wait right here. Take the next idol that comes in so and then he like pops like a barrel under himself or like near him um would you look to get rid of the barrel here or would you look to just disengage so first i would never jump in here uh mm -hmm. just because the wave the new the fresh wave just got here uh oh. but let's just say you know we're in this situation i would not look to kill the barrel no definitely not because you need to disengage immediately as because all these minions are going to start hitting you mm -hmm. um so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't jump in there at all and then because like at this point with the wave being so big you can't really just jump in and kill him unless he trolls so so basically if i'm you i'm going to be floating in this area looking to bait out if you don't walk up enough to bait out the barrels, he'll never use it. So you yeah. want to float in this area, try to get him to, you know, bait out the barrels. He puts one here, puts one here. You queue up maybe to avoid it. And then if he has no barrels and he walks up for a CS or overextends past his wave, you could jump in and, and ult him and, and try to kill him. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't give you any of those options, like I said, you'd let it push in, try to thin out the wave, start slow pushing back to him and go for that sequence we talked about. But... As of right now, you're taking so much damage that it might be hard. Like, if, if you lose... Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay. That's some grief-ass shit. Don't do that, don't do that. Wait, so... Uh, so why did you... Q and then W here? Are you trying to freeze um, this, or...? Yeah, I'm trying to do somewhat of a freeze, but I don't think it actually freezes. I think I just kind of, like, tank all the minions, and I'm like, okay, well, I have, like, my vamp vamps up and i can just like heal so it, like you doing that just like if, if if i'm him and i see you do that i i would just walk forward and now you are like fucked because you don't have w yeah yeah so you kind of just got to hold that and let it crash you're, you're gonna take way too much damage trying to tank this whole way yeah i don't know where he goes but that makes sense though you don't really want to like commit big cooldowns for a freeze is kind of unless like you know he's so screwed that it's fine like he's at like 20 percent hp and your best punish is freezing then yeah you're fine by all means but luckily he didn't he actually reset on the bad wave so those these are like the mistakes that they make non-stop that i'm talking about um but okay so waves frozen um, he is going to be ahead of you here, though. Uh, and that's another problem with freezing like this. Is like he he got to reset, so he's coming back to lane with all thirty six hundred spent. You only have twenty nine hundred spent. So you are ahead in a level uh, by a level, but okay. So this is the other problem um, with freezing. You know, it, it it lets him do stuff like this where. He might be bleeding a little bit, but at this point in the game, that doesn't matter that much. Right. But if he's under tower, he can't do this. Um, he is trolling, though, so this is free. Who even knows what he's doing? Nice. Good job uh, being patient with the flash. Top wave did crash during that, though. And that's another problem. Is like, if you freeze and then try to leave... Yeah, like, like you see, I was like... Uh, there was like a moment I was like, uh, uh, where do I go? Because it's right. like... <laughs> yeah. So you see, you kind of see what I'm saying with the whole freezing thing. Why it's kind of a trap. Yeah, it's so fucking awkward. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So. Because if okay, if mm -hmm. in theory, if if someone holds like if someone freezes, am I should I be able to just leave lane? Not like if I fro quote unquote froze properly and then went to rotated to this fight, would it? Would should the wave be at the same spot like? indefinitely no no, no, no. Okay. no a freeze requires you to be there because you're okay. you're manipulating the wave like making sure they have more minions than you so it will push towards you mm -hmm. but if you don't stop it from crashing then it will start pushing towards them and that's what happened when you left then and then mm -hmm. it crashes because you're not there to stop it so no mm -hmm. it won't stay there indefinitely um and so like you'll kind of start to learn how long it will stay there so like if i freeze like that and I want to help this fight. I I know how long it will stay like that, so I know how long I can leave. But you is don't. Is that just like an experience thing? Mm -hmm. like... Yeah. So like, look, we can even look here. 
So we'll see how long this lasts. So you left, 11.15. Well, it's going to, you know, be different for how many minions they have, if it's a cannon wave and stuff, like just a little bit. But <laughs> you can see here. So they have, this is six, seven minions to your three. This will last shit no more than 10 seconds. As you can see, so it's going to be... So it crashed eight seconds. So the the more like the closer the waves are to each other in terms of like how many minions there are on both sides, the longer it will stay there because mm -hmm. the wave doesn't kill it as fast. So now it's not the biggest deal to lose these minions right here. It's just not optimal, mm -hmm. right? Compared to hard shoving, not losing anything, making him bleed if he wants to help at all. He wouldn't even be able to. You'll kill him if he tries to help anything. Like he won't be able yeah. to walk past you. But um, so yeah, these are all things that it, it, all this affects consistency. That's like you know what we're looking for. Um, yeah, being consistent. My main goal is like to like really like get good CS per minute, and I'm always like thinking like how do how do I see these top laners that like get 10 CS a minute, and I'm not able to do the same, and I'm like shit. Like what are they doing? So um, I'm like. A big part of that I'm going to teach you once we get into the mid game here. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. It's it's not as much laning phase CS as it is mid game wave uh, knowledge. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, yeah, kill this champ. Fuck this champ. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, top wave. Chucky yep. You get Ch Chucky Cheese. Way worse than Fiora. Uh oh. Okay. Okay, I don't know whether I should have stayed for this plate. I was hoping my Anivia would go top, but I don't know. Like, Well, the thing about Anivia going top is, one, lane assignment-wise, we don't want Anivia top. She thrives in mid. She's a wave mm -hmm. champ. Her, her, one of her main win conditions is keeping this tower up. So mm -hmm. if you do this and she goes top, not all, like your wave's slow pushing. So she's going to get mm -hmm. here for one wave and then be so far up that she could die. So, like, it's okay to take this plate here, um, okay. but you don't really want her. You don't want to stay any longer because she shouldn't really be going up there. Right. Um, okay. So, everything makes sense that we've covered so far? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a lot of info, but it's all. this is all just, like, fundamental stuff so far. Nothing too... No, yeah, I, I agree. Ah, yes, the team at C. Now, this is what we want. Yeah, I'm like, damn. Now we're pushing. Uh oh. Where could you be going? Um, I don't know if I stay mid or stay top. Cause I was like, oh shit, is it about to show up or something? So like, do I? I don't know what I did here. Tbh, I just like kind of. Also, where is your mana? I think I Q like. Like with Hydra, you don't have to use Q. To clear the wave. That's the beauty. You you use so much mana, but um, yeah, you definitely should not be leaving here. Like him showing up is one thing, but he hasn't shown up. You still have a whole minute of plates. You should be taking that shit. Cause what if he doesn't show up? What if he goes somewhere else? You'd already have the and next I, plate by now. Then I can yeah, I can juice the next plate. He still hasn't shown up. You'd be working on the second. Oh, you second. know what was going on in my mind? I probably was like, oh, I need to recall and get Hydra now because the whole fucking, um, whatchamacallit, steel caps purchase, like, delayed my Hydra purchase. So I, like, wanted to recall and then get Hydra. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine, but not. So, yeah, getting, com going, or uh, recalling once you have enough gold to complete the items, good, but you need to punish them and juice as much gold out of this as possible since they're giving it to you. Mm -hmm. So, like, you should have easily gotten two plates, if not the whole tower. Um, and, and to be honest, like, if your alt was up, I would say get a plate, kill him on the way back to lane. Should I, like, proxy and then kill him? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, but this, th that's, you just came out of base. No reason to recall just to finish an item when there's so much more gold to be had. And now plates are going to be gone by the time you come back. Because it's not like the Hydra... Power spike finishing the Hydra is like so big compared to the items you already had the Tiamat, Vamp Scepter, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I like think my mind is like, oh, I have, I have, I have, uh, whatchamacallit, Hydra. Like, like, I need to match his fucking 
what do you call it? Essence Reaper or whatever. Like, he has a complete item. I should have a complete item, too. Kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. I'm like... So, that that train of thought, you want to more be thinking of it like this. Like, okay, I won't fight. I won't try to fight him, like, all in him until I complete the item. But mm -hmm. you can still, you know, take the free gold that they're giving you. Okay. Um, so here, you did Q, W, you blocked the barrel. And yeah, it's my usual parry into the thingy. Mm -hmm. And it works that time. So you could just hit the barrel here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, fuck, I did it again. Jesus Christ. Uh, you didn't need to, or like, you, you can hit the barrel there. You can try to hit the barrel. Um, also, you can also kite out his ult and like fight him outside of it. You don't have to just like stand in there and tank it. Uh, if, yeah. You know, if this is closer for some reason. Um, you did all. I think I autoed a minion here, which I was like, wait, why didn't I get that vital? And then mm. I think I had to flash for that. Mm. So I think that was like a mechanical thing. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you don't use the target champions only button, that could make this easier. Yeah. Uh, you just turn that on and make it a toggle. So you just turn it on before you fight. And, uh, but either way. Um, because that, that fight, that 1v1 shouldn't really be close at all. I mean, it really wasn't, uh, even with the mechanical mistake. But that, that 1v1 you win, uh, just so you know, you win that just as hard without yeah. the Hydra finished. But So, like, you see it there where, like, um... What happened when I killed him? There was like one itty bitty caster minion, mm. or how it was like there. Yeah, it was right here. And yeah. it was like I was like, okay, well, I want to take this turret now. And then it's like I'm awkwardly just like waiting around. So I'm like, okay, I need to shut like kill this wave. But then mm. I'm like, oh shit, he has like teleport. So this is like the the fucking top lane conundrum mm. that I like can't like seem to crack. Oh, this this isn't as this isn't like the other ones. This one's way more simple because he can't do anything. Like, he can mm -hmm. TP in all he wants, but you're full HP. It's not like he can stop you. You just kill the okay. wave right in front of him. You can even hit the tower in front of him after you mm -hmm. crash it. But definitely... Weird, weird time to parry, but uh, definitely don't need to be stressed out about a scenario like this. You can walk up and hit that barrel right there, too. Like, he can't do anything to you. He's, yeah. like, kind of trolling you TP in there, honestly. You should have chunked him for that. And then, look. He yeah. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. So this should have turned into you chunking him here, and then you guys diving him. Okay. Um, yeah, you can just walk him and hit the tower. In my mind, I I kind of feel like looking back on it, and like in my mind, I felt like I could have just because I had demolished right, and I could have just like yeah chunk the tower. Is that what you would have done? Mm -hmm. Or okay, I would have killed Even the barrel, chunked him. Hit the tower right in front of his face and pinged my jungler to die since he was here. Wait, is the is his barrel cooldown like, is is that like because okay the, the like five charges is like how many barrels he has stored right? Mm -hmm. But then the E is like what's the cooldown on that? Like oh. is that for him to place down a barrel? Th that's just or the recharge like... timer, but he can place them like pretty quick back to back. Okay, okay. But like, let's say you can't dive him, but you crash the wave. Like you could just go proxy the next wave. And then, mm. and then reset. Then you get a really good reset. Yeah. But you, we definitely don't want to be doing this where, like, again, like this is still letting him get away with... So, like, you could kill him again. You have Ignite up. You don't mm. even need all. Yeah. It yeah, just takes a few pokes. And then he used W, too. He has no W, no Flash, no Alt, tanking a minion mm -hmm. wave, level 9. You have Ignite up. You just poke him a few times with Q and then dive. Yeah. So yeah, definitely gotta be snowballing harder. You never really have to do anything like this. You never have to help your jungle with him. Okay. And if you ever... Okay, and this is a big problem. If, okay, helping your jungle with Herald is one thing. Like, let's say there's no minions here and there's nothing to do. Letting mm -hmm. GP push an entire wave with you here when he's level 9, you're level 11. Like, this circumstance where he shouldn't be able to touch a minion is a big issue. Yeah. Because now he actually just cleared a whole wave. Yeah, in my mind, I'm like, oh, like, what what am I doing? I'm letting him get this. And, like, I probably just autoed Harold, like, auto, I autoed Harold probably, like, two times or whatever. I didn't really do anything. So I'm like. And it's happening again. Yeah. So, in gen, like, in any game where you're ahead of the enemy top laner, especially as Fiora, like, if this is happening where the enemy top laner is just clearing ways in front of you, 
And there's not a very good reason for it. Like you have too low HP to do anything. You know, their jungler sitting behind him, you know, then you need to be like, okay, I'm not, I'm doing something wrong. Like this is a problem. Mm -hmm. But both of these waves so far, he's just freely pushed when he shouldn't be able to even walk up to the wave yet. He should be literally having okay. to sit under tower. And even under tower isn't safe for him. So, yeah, yeah that's a big problem here. You need to be pushing wait, did first. He, I feel like, wait, I feel like he was, did he like get HP back or something? I feel like, oh, I guess he was always full HP. It's like, basically, you should always be pushing first. Mm -hmm. So he has no tempo advantages. He has, he never, he can never farm for free. He should never be like this. So this is the third wave now where he's going to be. He would be here before you if he was ready for it, which just gives him free time to. So like, like in scenario, sorry, in scenarios yeah. like these where like you see where I like the vital like spawns towards me, the, the minion wave is practically even because like, like, yeah, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I'm also told by a lot of my by people mm -hmm, that yeah. i should that i should um i should sack cs to like push him off the wave essentially like what are you like i don't so, know what to do in this, this situation so i'm like people are always telling me oh like you win versus him you just like even if deny him xp even if it means you don't get as much gold so it them telling you that is true in some spots it depends like when they're saying it's so, like at 16 minutes in that's just that that's what you're going to be doing. You're just going to be pushing and trying to dive or proxy and take the tower. Like, we got to get out of laning phase here. This is in low elo laning phase. This lasts like 16 minutes like this sometimes. Like, this should be, this tower should be gone. I think every tower, yeah, every tower except for mid is up, which is crazy. But um, let, let's say this is earlier in the game. You know, when, like you have a lead, you're starting your slow push. Yeah, you can zone them off the wave, the nine XP. That's very, that's very good. At this point, though, no. Okay bit bigger because you got to think about it the longer this tower stays up uh the longer you're like restricted to being stuck in this lane and not pushing your lead like further mm -hmm. um because yeah. once you take this then the wave goes all the way to here and it takes a while for it to come back giving you more you know roam timers bigger tempo advantages let you affect the game a lot more um so yeah at this point First priority is to just be pushing, poking, diving, proxying, taking the tower, all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, you see like this? You gotta be fearless here. This dude needs mm -hmm. to be so afraid of you right now. Any yeah. damage he takes makes him easier to dive. Yeah. Yeah, see how... See, look how much damage his vital does real fast. Ready? Like oh shit, yeah. See, like so, him sitting like here, up here, like playing so confident, and you're like kind of running around playing a little bit more scared. It should be so back uh, reversed. It's crazy. Like he should be literally under tower, so afraid to walk up because just taking a little bit of damage means you can di you can dive him. Like he's diveable now. Mm -hmm. He just used W. You could literally alt him here and go to dive if he had no flash you should ult him yeah i did I, I i in my mind i was like i probably should have dove in tbh like because he's like half hp from that vital mm -hmm. and like so yeah push and dive would you say it would be risky even if he has flash or nah no because you're fiora mm -hmm. and like he even used w right in front of you right there yeah. so like yeah he might flash away but we're if he flashes away the worst that happens worst that should happen is like he lives but you live uh mm -hmm. he probably shouldn't even be able to get away with flash but because of your q um and if you're too afraid to like hit him under tower or dive him which you really shouldn't be at this point um or like with this hp and, and ignite up he used w uh, you can just hit the tower in front of him he, he can't do much to you right uh but you should be queuing him on off cooldown like that yeah and then yeah yeah, I was just tickling him a bit. I'm like, huh, I don't know. I like, do I entertain this idea? And then I see the demolish, and I'm like, oh, it's like looking at me. Do I like do it? But I think I just, um, I hold back a lot, and I'm like, well, oh yes, flash. That's remember what I told you though. Like, I know, it's a mental hurdle, but like, it's really gonna hurt your progression. Like, mm -hmm. it it'll, it'll slow your progression like so much. 
because like once you get over this hurdle and like you know your limits on how to dive people you will be amazed how easy the games become Mm -hmm. you'll just start running over anybody you'll start doing this three four four wave slow push into dive them into your three four levels up you're taking this getting 700 gold from this jungler comes you're killing them both like that's what the game turns into instead of this where like you're you're slowly pulling ahead but you guys are even in cs which is nonsense right yeah um and he's just sitting here like he's running at you with no hp no w Mm -hmm. if you ask literally any high elo fiora player any high elo top laner they would say you're just totally griefing letting gp do what he's doing at the moment yeah. Um, so we definitely got to fix that. Especially, like, right there, you poked him a little bit because you didn't go any further. He queued you, and now you're half health, and makes it harder to die. Yeah. Hits the spot. Oh, you definitely can't let him clear away, though. Yeah, he's, yeah, you're still trying to. It's like, he can't even do that. Like, right here, you should be standing right where my mouse is, getting ready to start autoing the wave as soon as it gets here, and clearing it, and sustaining off of it. And then you crash mm-hmm. it, and then you go for the dive. But you're letting him giving him all this room to walk up to the wave, put a barrel down, and put push you away from the wave. Yeah. That can't be happening. Yeah, I'm letting him be the pig. Mm-hmm. It's, like, terrible. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and this is the point where I'm like, oh, shit. Because I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I, like, wish I would have just dove him yep. before the birds current came, you know? That's what I was going to say. The longer you let him survive, the higher the odds of, like, something coming and, like, fucking with you. Yep. You know, so... This all is prevented just by snowballing properly. They, no one can help him. There is no saving him once you get ahead of Fiora. Um, and then when you do that as well, like you have to put more value on your W as well. Uh, it's a big cooldown, but it, like really, it's such an insane ability when you just try to keep using it like this. Like there's no world you should be jumping in using W here. Mm-hmm. You should be, if if anything. If I'm you at this point, I'm saving it for a gank because I don't need it to kill him or push this wave in or anything like that. Gotcha. So you can just see how all these, like, some small things, some big things, you see how it all adds up here. And then... Yeah, I try to turn on GP, but I'm like, this is hella fucking awkward. And then he gets my 400 gold shut down, and I'm like, ah, jeez, he's back in the game. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And and this is what I mean by it. Like, not only is it going to slow your progress from a learning standpoint, like learning your limits and, and so you know them from future games, you can see how it, it hurts you in that in that specific game too. Like, it just completely threw your game. I'd rather see you throw the game trying to dive someone and fuck it up than like this, because then you learn nothing. You you Now, you still didn't learn if you could dive him or not. Mm-hmm. So if you dive and fail, at least you learned, okay, I, I couldn't dive them for whatever reason, their items, levels, like HP, execution uh, mistake, whatever it is. But we don't learn anything if we don't try. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so now now, now the mid game starting finally, because tier 1 towers fell. Um, and so at a base here, let me put you in base for a sec. Okay, so if I pause as you respawn out of base, what lane, like, where do you think you should go at the moment? If I'm looking at it now, I should probably go bot to, like, stop the auction. Um, but I go top because I'm petty and I want my turret like, <laughs> down. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. okay, so why do you want this turret <laughs> down? I'll be honest, I'm a petty ass bitch. Like, I just, like, I want, I want it dead so I can, like, split push top and i'm like okay well i know like um <laughs> well why do you want to split push yeah, yeah. top because dragon's up and i can like pressure a split push and then like ideally in my brain what goes on is that i want sorry my chat's laughing at me um but i like i literally i see dragons up and I'm like okay well hopefully my team goes for dragon and like uh-huh. anivia is supposed to, be, supposed to be bought to like you know get the auction and then yeah and i keep on pushing top and just okay yeah, so that that is a good way or that that's a that reason uh we can accept uh the, the reason mm-hmm. of you know wanting to split push top that is good it's just right here there is like so split pushing on the opposite side of the objective is good but you're gonna get so much gold like there, there is no dragon happening right now look like two people are dead on both teams 
There is no yeah. dragon going to be happening. So you go down here, you collect this entire wave, then you push the next ones out all the way to this tower, and then if you can't mm-hmm. take the tower or anything, you'd reset, and then maybe then you'd go top lane and start that. Um, mm-hmm. But fact of the matter is, you not going bot lane here, I just want you to see how much CS you guys are going to lose, your entire team, and especially you. Because this is where you can get a lot of gold. So... One, four, seven, eight. Now look, watch, watch what the wave does. So support getting the CS is useless. Um, yep. But this wave is good, would start pushing back towards them. Mm-hmm. So you guys would miss all of that CS too. Um, so what would have happened here? What should have happened is you go bot your bot lane uh, respawns. They go to top lane. Um, you would either kill Action. Or if he would leave, and you would push, you would collect all that CS, and then push it all the way out, uh, and that is how you get 10 CS per minute. This, this is what I was going to get into. Understanding, like, collect, like collecting every CS kind of thing. Well, like... understanding, uh, like how to manage side lane waves and how far to push them. So when it, waves like this, so collecting all of that and then making sure you push it all the way to the tower, that's the key. Mm-hmm. Make because. Then you don't miss any, because it will push yeah. back to you. Yeah. Um, but if you just push it like to here or something, then like you're gonna lose like two waves as it finishes pushing on its own. Yeah. Uh, and this is. I another- feel like I feel like I like a lot in the mid game. I'm just like ping ponging side waves rather than like pushing them out to the max. And like I kind of go, I will sit in a brush, collect a wave, then like hide or something. Like I don't. Oh. Okay. I've never. Yeah. I I never know what to do with waves. So are you saying like and. In the mid game, I should always be looking in the like shove out waves. Yeah. To, like the target. Yeah, yeah. So okay. this is another reason it's so important to win lane. The stronger you are, the harder it is for anyone to stop you from doing that. Like, if you mm-hmm. aren't killable by the enemy top laner, in in even better, if you aren't two v oneable, like if the enemy top and jungle can't kill you, the game is just impossible for them. They can't. Like, if they send two people to you, that's not enough. So no one can stop you from pushing all the way to their tower. And getting a huge because if you push all the way to the tower, you don't lose any CS and you get a big tempo advantage that you can use to do whatever. Like, there's a lot of things you can do with it. But mm-hmm. so if you win lane and you're really strong, the enemy top laner, they they can never they can never do this. They can never push the wave all the way to your tower because th- they could die for it. But you, if you're if you're you know winning lane, nothing can stop you. So the enemy top laner is constantly going to push like one wave and then bleed the rest of the waves while you are getting every single wave. So you get 10, 11, 12 CS per minute. Enemy top laner is going to be at like 7, 6, you know, 8 max CS per minute because they literally cannot push the waves all the way to the tower. So it's impossible to have 10 CS per minute. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. So this is very, this is like literally like top lane and even like mid lane if you're a side laning champ. Uh, macro uh in a nutshell that's like the number one thing you're going to be pushing waves all the way uh before you go to do something else unless like it's literally too dangerous to do so it's like right here this wave you guys push it all the way this tower now if you can take the tower in front of him you do it if if you can dive him you do it if you can't you recall and you can go anywhere because this wave is going to push back to you in my mind i'm like I know with demolish and like you know a couple autos I can like get the tower and kill him, but then I also don't know where anybody is, so I'm like I'm a bit like fearful doing these kinds of like plays. So I'm like, in a way I'm like oh shit, like I'm like letting him kind of like disrespect me in a way by like letting him just like auto these minions, but I'm also like scared because I don't know. Well, like, so yeah. you say you don't know where anybody is, mm-hmm. but we see everybody. The only person we don't see is Echo, but he he, yeah. he can't do anything to you here. And also, okay. like you gotta understand, this is worth seven hundred gold. It, you mm-hmm. could die for this, and it's worth it. So this is just another thing where, like, like this Blitzcrank, this Blitzcrank cannot be enough to stop you from getting seven hundred gold, but just walking up and autoing that with demolish, you'll kill it like so fast. Echo mm-hmm. can't kill you anyway. You can one be two them. Yeah. So. You can't be like this afraid. And like and you did say you said you didn't know where anybody was. Did you take into account where when we saw Action down here and Samira here and all that? 
Um, in game, probably not. Because that's Cause other. Otherwise, I would have had that information. I would have been like okay with it. Because my thinking is like, oh, like Echo could like kill me as well if like you know if like Blitzcrank sets it up. Even if like I get the turret, you know. So I'm like. Well, so let's think of it like this: for them to kill you, they they have to like legitimately a hundred to zero you. That because they're burst. Mm -hmm. They don't have any mm -hmm. damage after their initial burst. So they have to be able to kill you through your healing, through your W. Uh, they have to land everything. They have to not get parried with their CCs. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to actually do your entire health bar because if not, you heal so much and they don't have any more damage then you're going to proc your vitals and you're going to kill them both. That's what mm -hmm. should happen. They, they can never really kill you. Um, but even if they could, you take this so fast that you have to go get it here. You, you have to. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can't, then you have to leave. Like, there's no point in dancing around here. You just... You're just wasting your tempo advantage. That's what a tempo advantage is. Like, you crash the wave. Now you can move before they can. So you can either recall with that tempo advantage. You can roam somewhere with it. Um, whatever. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but... There was no way anyone could be there, so... I had to just walk up, take that, and then... Uh, Okay. Well, he's a real grouper. Okay, so that was some. No way, you guys lost this game. Wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta push. So look right here. This is why I'm pushing it all the way. So as you can see here, let's say you don't go push this. You see, this is a cannon wave. This mm -hmm. isn't. So like, if you didn't push this, you just lose it. Mm -hmm. And that's what causes you not to. If like, that's why you need to push it all the way to the tower, and that's how you get 10 CS per minute. Yeah. Um, so here you should be, okay. So you should be so, walking forward and then like him. pushing him off the wave. No, no, no. You'd basically be going for this in case, cause he could be on the way down here or something. Uh huh. So then he shows up and then it's like, then, you know, okay, now I can back off. Um, taking this red is fine. And then you'd reset. Yeah. Spend your gold. Now you got those. So now you want to go bot lane here. Sadly, Vayne is there at the moment, but you do want to like have yourself a bot lane um, after this mid. I was, I was hoping to come and like kill the Samir. It just didn't work out the way I thought. I was I was hoping uh, Malkai would just like wait for me, and then I yeah, I guess I kind of baited him. Uh, yeah. Th so this will never work because so this is classic like low elo. Um, but this is a really classic little mistake, actually. So, you need to be think. This all goes back to right here. So we talk about tempo. You have a mm -hmm. tempo advantage here because you crash this. Now look, Akshan has to hold this wave, giving you time to either recall or you use that tempo advantage to take this red buff. Now mm -hmm. I want you to look at the mini map. How, um, but because you use time for this, which is fine. This is fine to take. Look at how what the enemy team like where they're allowed to get to on the map by the time you kill this, recall and get back out. See how they're you see how you are now coming out of base and they are all on the map in the middle of the map. Yep. That is what that is like tempo right there. You used your mm -hmm. tempo to get the red buff, and then like so now they get back out on the map first. If you didn't take the red buff, you could be back out on the map first. But like, like I said, the red buff is fine. So you can't grab that and then go... Like, look, you're going to see Samira Blitz right here. And so you just go head first. But where's mm -hmm. Akshon? Where's Echo? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, Echo could be on the map, maybe? Or... They, they, they all should be on the map because yeah. they were all just in base. And now they were coming back out. And now yeah. you're coming back out. So, like, tracking where everybody could be is a very important thing. You can't just go into these plays hoping they're not here. And you should only really be going for these. Like, in low elo, sometimes I'll go for a kill like this because I, I think there's no world anyone should be here. And then they'll be here because they're like, they just do weird things sometimes in low elo. Yeah. But if you're not even thinking about, the like, if they could all be here or not, then that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, because dying here in the mid game is way bigger of a deal. That's another thing that will contribute to your 10 CS per minute thing. 
Because mm -hmm. you should be thinking here, okay, like I know, you know, they should all be on the map. Vane's bot, so you clear this mid wave, and then you'll probably try to rotate the bot lane. Hopefully, like Vane leaves, and that's where you'll go. But this is just like forcing without knowledge of where they could be. Because think about it. Where does the enemy team have to be right now? They don't really like they're not they don't have to be here because this is gonna be gone. So yep. they only need to collect it once it hits this. Top wave GP should go up there, honestly. But other than that, it'd be totally fine for Echo and like if I'm if I'm Echo, I'm just gonna shadow these two by sitting like right here behind the wall in case anybody does this. Yeah. Um And and actually, wait, is that exactly what he was doing? No, he might have been doing that exact thing. Or he just happened to walk through. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, he just saw something might go down and he ran over. And so this is what I'm talking about. Like you can't go for a play like this unless you know that you can that they're either alone or that you can kill anything that shows up anyway. Yeah. Um because when it comes to league, you don't ever like to climb consistently, you don't have to make 1v3 plays, 1v4 plays, like nothing crazy. It's all just risk reward. Mm -hmm. This the risk here compared to the reward is way, way, way too skewed towards the risk part. Yep. Um So Yeah. Yeah, so now he gets killed. Okay, push this wave. Oh, now they're gonna go to Baron. You should be pinging assist me at Baron here. But you need to push mid wave. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the most important wave in the game. If no one's here to push it and you're here, you push it every time. Okay. Um, because that's gonna give you an that's gonna give you options here. So your teammates sadly aren't doesn't seem like they even know that Baron is gonna be happening here. So if you're pushing mid wave and your teammates aren't coming to this like they should, then you could try to take this. Um <laughs> um, don't i was like okay i was like i was like i know they're doing baron so like let's get some vision or like let's go there and then i'm like yeah and that's good like you do want to contest baron because baron it's not like dragon dragon you don't contest when you're a man or two down because the dragon doesn't do anything baron shreds mm -hmm. resistances you know shreds their hp you can win man one man down two man down three man down fights at baron but the important part here is not getting tunneled on the Baron's HP. Your job here, you're not the jungler, so your job isn't to steal the Baron or anything like that. Your job is just to kill them. But you do need teammates to arrive here, so... Oh, no. Yeah, I think it was like... Wait, can we watch that again? Was that like a max range? I just wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh, shit. So this is why, actually, I was leading with, like, to not get tunneled on the Baron's HP and, like, not, not rushing, because you will kill them, you yeah. just need to wait. Um, like, you oh gotta gosh. remember, this is a four second cooldown without it hitting anything. Just, just cue this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason. I mean, that you got robbed, though. Like, that shit didn't even hit. You got robbed. But, it's easily avoidable. You have plenty. Of, you've, got, you've got 60, who even knows how many frames? 60, 70 frames to cue, to see the hook coming, just cue away, and then get ready yeah. to kill them all. This is a big issue here, uh, because this should be them all dying. You got you, Talon, and Nivia will kill them all, like, and it won't even be close. All right, well, they're all grouped up, like, like, like doing the Baron together. So my thinking was like, oh, we could all like kill them. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, that is what will happen. You'll kill them all, yeah. but not with you getting hooked and then one shot. We're all like chain dying. Holy shit! This is so painful. <laughs> Yeah, like this, this, you could have won the game here. Mm -hmm. You you guys would have killed them all, take the Baron, and then you would just push. Yeah. But you getting hooked made it so now everyone's going in one by one, and yeah, this is a disaster. Yeah, and this is the point where I'm like, okay, there's this is going to be a game. So I'm like, okay. And the worst part is, the only reason they even started Baron was because of the play that was forced at mid lane. Yeah. So remember that like, you got to think about what your win conditions are. Your win mm -hmm. condition is not, okay, I need to like get a pick on the enemy ADC. That's what assassins do. That's their win right. condition. 
Your mm-hmm. win condition is to be, I mean, your name, uh, the, the champs, Fiora, I think the Grand Duelist, right? I think. Yeah. So, you know, your win condition is by pressuring and pushing side lanes, being unduelable, and, and either yeah. diving them or, you know, 1v2ing. Or a lot of the time what will happen is the enemy top laner feels like they can't contribute to the game because they're just pushed under tower all game. So they'll like yeah. TP and try to make a 5v4 play, but that's just a gamble. If it doesn't work, you you're going to be taking the whole base. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's your win condition. Yeah. So you went for this play, which, you know, you went for something that an assassin would do, which Mm -hmm. backfired, and then a little misplay here, letting yourself get hooked. Now the game's like, you guys are losing real bad. Now the game's not in your hands really anymore. Uh, Or or like barely. Basically, the way I VOD review stuff, once the game's not in someone's hands, that's normally when you should wrap it up. Because now it's just they have to throw. I think you are. St- I think you still can one v one GP. He's ahead of you in gold though, so it makes this game very very hard. Uh, maybe you pick up some shutdowns here. Okay, your stuff. Point point point. Yes sir. Oh. Okay, we got one. So that's a cl- that's the classic low elo. I don't even want to say. Purely low elo. I mean, this is just happening in Masters lobbies. Uh, but dying with Baron like that, as soon as they get it, that's good. Now the game's winnable again. But we got to get into our win condition. So, like, yeah, you got you want to push this all the way. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. So, Akshan dies. Samira and um, Blitz are should be coming out of base, like, right? Or, like, they just respawned, right? So they should be exiting base oh no blitz mm-hmm. blitz didn't die just samira so yeah so she's exiting base so that means you should know like this guy blitz is either behind him or he's alone yeah so, um the the fact that like blitz was like behind him i think i was like traumatized from that one time like i didn't tower dive the fucking gp and then i was like oh shit this blitz crank's like gonna like back this gp up so i was like i i, I feel like i should have killed gp here but at the same time i like well we just yeah. saw Blitzcrank right here, actually. Yeah, that's so just that, me not looking at my minimap as often as I should, to, to be honest. But, so yeah. in the mid game, especially on a split pusher, I'm look like I, when I'm pushing, all I'm I'm looking more here than here because mm-hmm. that's what tells you what you can do. You don't know yeah. what you're supposed to do or what you can do if you don't know where people are. So yeah, I would ju- I'm I would literally just be moving in my eyes or on the mini map because once I get the information, then you can make your decisions. But you can't make any decisions without that information. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, this is a this is another extru- like this is a game winning play you can make here if you kill him. Because now, even though they got Baron, first uh, two people died. Echo Samira. And this is the classic low elo stagger deaths. Two people die, and then before they can even come back to life, another person dies, and then they never are all up in time. Yep. Got so Chucky e. Cheese Akshan to like also like <laughs> right. with the revive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that like he needed to die there. He he's still fearless of you, like you're uh-huh. not Fiora. So, yeah, these guys gotta die. Okay. Here okay, we I go. I think back down here. Oh. Oh, I think I, I don't know minion of fucking cringing, but I, yeah, I think I back off because I'm like, I don't know. I again, Blitzcrank's on my mind, but then I didn't see him mid, so I was like, oh, I thought he would. So I would rather see you like. Okay, so think of it this way: you backing off early like this, uh, like you you can still die if he's on the way. They're still gonna catch you because that means he's yeah. gonna be like here. Yeah, because so like, he has he, Mobies, right? So you think he could make it there? Not before you kill this guy, no. Okay. But you definitely need to kill this guy. Like, he flashed, too. So, mm-hmm. but it looks like... Yeah, it lo- you you seem to... So, like, Fiora, you know, is a little bit more mechanical than other champs. Um, <laughs> but you definitely lose out on a lot of DPS. Like, right here... Why didn't you auto him on this side and then immediately queue to this side? I don't know. I think I... Like, think, look how much DPS you're losing here. Because mm-hmm. you haven't autoed him other than that one vital. You haven't autoed him yet. 
-hmm. You just kind of stood there for a bit, and then you autoed the barrel, and then look, you didn't you you didn't even auto queue. You yeah. just did one Q and then queued away from him. Like this guy would should be dead already. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, at this point, I guess it's fine to to jump away because you, you, yeah, it took a while to kill him, but definitely need to kill him there. Um, okay. Dragon is spawning, that's good. If 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 GP's dead, like he should be here, and Dragon spawning, there is a world, because this happens all the time, where the enemy team all goes for Dragon and you literally end the game. Like straight up. It's happened so many mm -hmm. times, it's it's crazy. But GP, the problem with him is he has high wave clear. And this is why Baron's so important. With yeah. Baron, he can't clear the waves. But if you don't kill him or dive him, he just clears these waves over and over, and now you're you kind of get stuck. Yep. Um, but yeah, this GP is getting away with. Oh, nice! Your ult's coming back. Wow, your ult's actually pretty short. Ult out there. Yeah. Honestly, I should probably dive him, right? Mm -hmm. you should dive him right there. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. You guys win here if you dive him. You end the game. Yeah. No, yeah, hundred percent. Ah, shit. <laughs> so as you can see, a lot of these problems are coming from not diving, not pushing the lead. Like, and imagine if you push your lead properly in lane. This guy wouldn't be 15. He'd be 12, and you're 15 mm -hmm. and 16. 10 and 0, yep. 12 and 0, or, you know, you'd be you'd have a shitload of gold, and he'd be so far behind that the dive just gets easier and easier and easier. Yeah. But the longer you let him get away with this, the harder it becomes. And now he's just clearing waves. Should I have, so granted what, granted the outcome of like him like not dying and stuff right here, so I rotate mid, would you say I should just keep on perma pushing top and then trying to get the turret rather than rotating to this? Well, this is just, this is just team deathmatch. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. There's no objective here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, so you're rotating over to a fight where there's nothing to fight for. You're yeah. closer to their base than yours, so... You know they have to commit so hard to die here, and then that and that isn't even taken into account that th they have people respawning in five seconds. So if you don't kill these guys immediately, the other ones will run you down anyway. Yeah. So for like a lot of different reasons, you never go here. Mm -hmm. um, but and then he cleared top wave, and your next wave is in here for a while. So right now, because you know you didn't dive him, you don't have a place, so you recall and spend your gold. Okay. That's that. If you recall and spend your gold here, you don't waste any tempo, and then you can be out on the map before they are out on the map. Uh, right. So they, I'll be I'll be fresh with my items when they spawn in, and then I can focus on again pushing, and then I guess right. And it splitting. makes yeah. it makes it so GP like so now now look. Well, let's see what GP does now with because you're dead for forty seconds now because that that was a really this is a game changing death by the way. Uh, look what he can do. Even though he can't ever push this far because you're stronger than him, like he could, he should and can push even more because you're dead for a while. So you essentially let the enemy top laner, let the enemy team go and freely push out sideways, giving them tempo advantages and pressure and gold. He's now level 16 before you are. Yeah. Um, so, like, you see, these are like. Very like your your mid game macro game plan is actually like very simple. Uh, it's easier, I guess, said than done um, because some things can make it harder. Uh, but as Fiora, when you're really fed, if you if you push your lead in early game properly, all you really do in the mid game is push waves all the way to here. Can you dive them? If so, do it. Can you ki kill the tower in front of them? If so, do it. If you can't do either of them, then you use the tempo advantage to maybe rotate and create a 5v4 play. You know, mm -hmm. that's really it. And you just rinse and repeat. And then you right. just get further and further ahead of the enemy top laner because they can't push it all the way like you. And then if yeah. they try, you just kill them. Yeah. Um, so this GP has 210 CS. He's more than you, even though he's not, he hasn't been in a state where he could 1v1 you all game. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. So the fact, oh, this is another thing. The fact, uh, 
so as you can see, so let's say this Baron was up in 20 seconds here. Like, let's mm -hmm. say it's about to come up right now. Because you died, you're now here instead of here. Mm -hmm. That's the tempo that we're talking about. If you don't yep. die there, you could already have reset, be pushing here, and been working on this tower before this Baron, like as the Baron's respawning. So the enemy team is forced to make decisions fast, which is where everyone messes up. Having to deal with a split pusher, it's very hard. But yeah. if the Baron's up here, right? And now let's say the enemy team starts it. They could kill the Baron, recall before you even touch this tower. So you can't, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. you see, that's why, like, not dying there for, for nothing, like, literally for no objective whatsoever. Yeah. That's why it's so important to not die there, because you don't want to waste any time. You want to make sure you are ready to push. So let's say, let's say your teammates get in a fight here in mid lane. You want to already be here pressuring and pushing, because I can show you an example of this, actually. Um, I'll do it, because we're about to close this one out, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um... Because, like, we're not really going to... There's nothing new. We're not going to really run into anything new. Pretty much covered everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it's definitely over. So, we're now at the point where, you know, he's, GP does scale really hard. So... What is all that damage coming from? I'm like, I know his barrels do a lot, but then I got the recap, and he did, like, like 1,100 true damage to me from his passive. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, GP's passive is... Absolute nonsense. 512 true damage. Remember, it resets off of barrels. So, mm -hmm. he can auto you once. Here's the true damage starts here. And then he's going to hit that. And that's very important. You don't... It's so, like, what's fun about this 1v1 is there's, like, mind games and, and, like, a lot of, like, footsies involved to where, like, right there, like, you run at him. You, you definitely need to work on W usage not being too linear with it. Like, you kind of use it at the same spot all the time. We yeah. saw that with your last VOD too, with the Teemo. Um, but mm -hmm. like when you jump in here, like you, so like, and he puts, uh, he hits you with the passive and then he wants you to walk on top of the barrel, but you can faint like that thing we we're talking about, like act like you're walking on top of it, click backwards. All right. He will auto it. Then you cue back in or you cue to the side. But so he hits you with the barrel. Now his passive's reset. He hits you with another one. Yeah. Um, and then now he just shoots you once. Yeah. So yeah. even though you didn't W anything, uh, you know, and you didn't really, you know, even though you didn't do anything like correct there, you still almost killed him. That's how strong you are yeah. in the 1v1. But mm -hmm. this isn't even close no matter what he does if you're ahead from earlier. That's the first thing to understand. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, like after this, this game's. If you're dying to him in a side lane this late, this game's really, really hard. Yeah, um, I agree. Okay, so we've covered pretty, like, yeah, pretty much every important thing uh, that will uh, be useful for you. If I if I go into the real nitty gritty stuff, it's not going to be useful because you need to get through this stuff first, and it might it'll just be information overload if this wasn't already information overload. No, it already is. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let me just show, real quick. Let me to wrap it up. Let me just show you the, a game I played earlier where I I'm gonna show you what split pushing does to people. Like the the beauty yeah. about with split pushing is it makes people. Oh wait, I need to type my name. I think it makes people uncomfortable. It I makes <laughs> it makes them have to make a decision that they yeah, don't know how like... to make. Mm -hmm. So. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll reshare screen in a sec. Okay. So I'll just show you one play here. I'm playing top lane Azir here, which is he's he's good in a side lane. Um, and I'll show you every time I went to a side lane this game. Wait, I think it. Okay, every time I went to a side lane in this game to push, so look, right here, you can see my screen, right? Um, not right now. You're going to have to, like, click on Discord again. Oh, like, okay, okay. Thank you, look. thank you. Yeah. Let me know when you can see it. I can see it now. Okay, right. so, look, I go to a side lane here. Look what, so, what should happen here when I'm pushing the side lane 
Especially because when my teammates are getting pushed in like this, it's very dangerous for me to push this. Uh, but the enemy team should sh only send one back for me, like uh, the enemy Galio or something. Um, the person that should never, the two people that should never, ever, ever come here to stop me. Their jungler, Ivern, and their support. Um, mm -hmm. Because they need to be, you know, with, with the team, whereas Galio doesn't. He has TP. But what split pushing does to people is, like, instead of him just, like, forcing a fight with me not there, uh, like, right here, this is where he should be, um, they send Ivern back for me, which doesn't make any sense at all, which you'll see why. Um, and then Galio, too, so I just kill them both. Yeah. So, like, these are, like, the decisions I'm talking about that they, they don't know how to make. They don't, he doesn't know what the proper macro is here when someone is pushing like this. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that happen all the time when you when you are split pushing properly in a side lane, and the enemy team like doesn't think that one person's enough, or you know doesn't know who to send back. That like they'll send supports back for you, which is like the last person ever that should be here. Yeah, I see that sometimes. I'm like, oh, why is this like Nami like trying to do something? Right. Like, yeah. And, and th these are this is like you know a higher reload than what you're in, and like even all the way up to. Even in challenger lobbies, split pushing can be tough to deal with be, uh, because at the end of the day, if someone can't match you, someone can't hold you, there isn't many good, easy options. It's like mm -hmm. either force something without them there, like while they're pushing and hope you can win the 5v4, or the enemy top laner just has to come hold your, like hold under tower and hope that their, t their team wins 4v4. And that they don't die under tower or whatever. You see, like, there's not many... That's why winning lane as a strong split pusher is the first step to the progression. And then snowballing yeah. that lead without being afraid of the towers and afraid of dying and all that. Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, it was def definitely uh, probably a little bit of information overload. But I gave you pretty much everything you'll ever need for until at least Masters minimum. I guess I'll see you in Masters one day. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's easier than you think it is to get there, like, in terms of skill. Like, Yeah, you know, people have told me, like, I, I understand that Fiora dominates side lanes, and Fiora, as a champion, kind of, you kind of got to snowball and, like, dominate the side lanes to win the game. It's just hard because people tell me that I just don't know how because I've never, like, seen why or, like, how because there's so many intricacies to snowballing, and I'm like, okay, this is how you do it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely helped. Cool. Um, all right. So do you have any questions before I hop out of here? <clears throat> um No. I think that's I think that's all I needed. Okay, cool. Well let me know how it goes. I hope it helped and uh we'll check up on your progress whenever whenever you're feeling up up to it. All right. It sounds good. Thank you so much, McVeigh. Yep, no problem. Bye. All right, bye.